All right. Oh, this one does work. Cool. Hey. Um, yeah, my name is Brent, and I gave a future of the Airflow UI last year. So I kind of consider this as a 2023 update because the future always keeps changing. We did a lot of stuff this past year, and I'm hoping to do even more in the year upcoming. We kind of started, well, quick about myself. Hey, my name is Brent. I live in New York. Airflow committer, and I'm a front-end developer at Astronomy. Brought in just, I wasn't an Airflow person beforehand. I'm a, I'm a UI developer. Uh, came into Astronomer, a bunch of different things to work on, but I was like, wait, the Airflow, Airflow seems really cool. It is this product that built by data engineers and things like that with like oftentimes UI is a big selling point, but it's very much like an app thought of how it was all built. This stuff works but not always in the most, but like really thought through in the best way. So I thought that was a really fun challenge to bring it in and try to bring in like modern UI frameworks to build a snapper UI that helps you figure out what is going on in your air, on airflow and how do you, like what's the problem and how to fix it. You know, the ba very basic user story that we go all the time. Ideally, you almost never want to go to the airflow UI. Everything's good and you like take one minute and you're, and you're done. Uh, so I'll just do a quick, here was the last time Airflow Summit was Airflow 2.3. We just changed from a tree view, which was like this mix of trying to take a bag, which is a graph, and put it onto a tree, but then like tree branches don't really merge well, and it was quite a confusing view, and we introduced this idea of a grid view as a way to see your tasks um, in the graph and like the actual like task group dependencies there. Uh, but that was really just the start of really trying to rethink how we could show you the information about your DAGs in the Airflow UI. Uh, but we then updated just before Airflow Summit, we released 2.7. And that I think was the maturation of what this idea with the grid view is for, is that it's really a way to navigate the DAGs. It was not just, okay, I see how a single DAG works here with the columns are a DAG run, and the top bar is how long that run took. So if you have many DAGs across this, you can see an outlier, maybe this DAG, this one DAG run that failed also took five times longer than any other DAG run. But here in 2.7, we really try to make it a way to navigate the DAG. If I click on it, I can switch from DAG runs and see the graph relationship right next to my history relationship of a DAG of the grid. Or if I click over to the Gantt chart, to the code, to the logs, I keep the context of what task logs I'm even looking at. What um, what bag run am I looking at when I'm comparing Gantt charts against each other? To see that, okay, the tasks run wildly differently from DAG run to DAG run. And having all of the task actions and DAG run actions right up there with you when you're like where you're at. It was really confusing before to go from click on a task, click to a completely separate page for the task logs. You forget maybe which DAG run you're on, which exact task it was. You lose context of what you're doing. Then you have to go to a different page to then like clear that DAG. It's like, okay, wait, in the logs, I see the issue. Now I want to clear it and rerun it. But you had to go three different pages to do that. And you might have forgotten where you were. And so I think that was a really cool part of doing this. We also added not just these UI pieces, but real features that came from the community of adding notes to a DAG run, adding notes to a task instance of maybe when I clear it, I also want to add a note. Hey, I cleared this. This is the second time I run it. This is the reasons we did it or whatever it may be. Uh, we also had the ability to actually act on a task group as a whole. That was a really cool community contribution that makes task groups this bigger concept as they became more prominent in the UI as well. I think it's a really fun part about the development of the UI is that as we change things, we notice like features that could be more useful that we add, add, add deeper into Airflow. And yeah, and then we had a really cool contribution recently in 2.7 of a cluster activity page, more what is going across your entire part of Airflow. Uh, now, I think I just wanted to like demo some of this as we can go. Here's Airflow 2.3, what we worked on in the past, so from this is like last Airflow Summit. And still, yeah, you have to click over to a log, come over here. This one doesn't even have logs, so now I'm really confused. Maybe this one has logs. Cool, I finally get to it. Or maybe not, then nothing's loading because it's a live demo. 
or we come to 2.7. Cool, here's my logs. Let's check them out. They loaded, actually, let's rerun that, clear, and see it live. Like two seconds, all on the same page, I know exactly what's going on. And uh, the one part I really wanna, I just really enjoy is like, okay, I can see the graph. Where does this task exist in its relationships? Where does it exist as within its group? How does that connect to things? Let me see that Gantt of how it ran, and let's compare it to others. And so I can see even, I can collapse the group and go and just see how maybe each run went. Before, with the Gantt chart, if I wanna like jump over, I'm not really sure how to read this. Which DAG run am I at? Click update, a lot feel like harder to switch between and maybe like even compare how some things run versus others. Um, but yeah, these are a few of the updates we have done in Airflow. And what is next? You know, I think it's to continue this idea of how do we make it easy to see, okay, I have one DAG that failed, let me see the logs, let me rerun it. And a big part of this is like, this is all done, this part is done in React, basically from this like clear filters bar below. Everything else is this Flask app builder, which has been quite difficult to build, to work with. It's like not that flexible. So even very simple feature requests are like, nope, that requires us rewriting everything to do. And so I'm hoping for 2.8 to really replace everything in the DAG page to be one React view. If we go over, yeah, everything. So everything underneath this bar for the DAG page should be in React. If you like click tr click trigger, you do any sort of actions, you wanna see the templates, it should all be in a single, um, it should all be like a very quickly rendered view, switching context between all of them. I would love to add the ability, as I have like a DAG run selected here as the column, we can add the intersect, we can select as task instance, which is the intersection of a column in a row, kind of like this little crosshairs, uh, but we don't have the way to select a row there yet. How do I wanna see about a task across everything, which is like kind of our views of task duration, task tries, which really hard to read. I don't know what this says. Um, I don't know what this is used for. It's really hard for me to interpret these at times. I know they have uses, but I think most of the time, Nobody touches these. If we look at data of like which pages people land on, these are some of the least common ones. So how do we make these more useful? That was the idea with updating the Gantt chart. How do we actually make that something useful you can get insights from when you clear a DAG run, you can actually see as it runs, as things enter different states from like scheduled to queued and how long that's taken compared to other tasks. And maybe that helps you see which task then you might wanna work on, well, why is this one taking so much longer than others? Why is it stuck in queued for five minutes? Uh, hopefully those are ways to help us debug and figure and write better DAGs. Uh, that's what I would really love in the UI. Uh, but yeah, going into some ideas of what's next. As I said, moving the entire DAG page over to React, um, redoing the DAGs list page. I mean, that is the home page of Airflow and it's still just this very static table view that has like a few elements that load in weird ways. We did add auto refresh to it, but it's all like, we've kind of had to just like hack things together. It's just Frankenstein beast of like JavaScript being like added on top of Flask App Builder. And I think it'd be really valuable to make that, build it in React as well. I would love to try to get that done in 2.8 or 2.9. And then that opens up the abilities of like, how else do you want to see your homepage? How else do we want to filter that? Like, all right, I only want to see DAGs that have an update in the past day or in the past week. What failed in the past week? What had like, if we fix, you know, if we improve SLAs, like, okay, what had something? What had like an alert happen in the past day or week? And those are the ways to filter. A lot, a whole lot of DAGs, this one ran two months ago. Why do I not want to see that? on my immediate view. That just creates noise and we wanna to try to avoid a bit of like a Christmas tree effect of just lots of reds and greens all over. And speaking of reds and greens all over, I would love to, as we modernize it, we get larger parts of this done. 
with like the DAG details being all in React, DAG's list is all in React, I think we can finally enable dark mode and finally enable a colorblind mode. So we're not relying on just red and green when a whole lot of people struggle to see those two. So what is, you know, what failed and what was successful could be really hard to determine. And then, yeah, talked about task row, cross things. And then, yeah, as we build a DAGs list, what are other cross DAGs views we could do? Maybe some sort of like update the calendar view that was a community contribution and make that a core part, more core part so you can see, oh, you set all your DAGs to run daily, but that means midnight. So all your DAGs run at the exact same time and get in the way of each other. And so you can like easily, the UI should help you write better DAGs and help you combine everything better. I think that's the core part. It should make your job easier. And um, yeah, I think one last one on there was also better links on DAG dependencies. I would love to, we have two different views here of, I can see my data sets and how things are combined here, or I can go click into a DAG that's part of that data set. And I see its graph. I can see it has like maybe like an upstream or downstream data set event. But I would love to see, you know, this graph should link over to that, that, that data set's graph. I should see that, no, this is not just a DAG with a single task. This has a data set connected to it. This has a data set below it. And I should be able to link between them all as we create with data sets, these ideas of almost like larger meta DAGs that everything is connected in there and make that a first class experience in Airflow, I think could be really cool. Um, kind of like we've already been updating the Airflow UI to support setup and teardown tasks. We have like, you can see the relationship between a setup and teardown task is a little bit different than a regular task. And so we added a dash line for that, or we add an icon for what is a setup and a teardown. And I'd love to just add more context to your DAG like what data sets are connected to it? Does it trigger something out in the distance or maybe other future specified things? Now, I think that's enough about my ideas. I would really wanna see, like what do people wanna see? Let's open up this conversation. What are some of the things that are really frustrating to you in Airflow? What things have you seen as updates that you've really enjoyed or maybe you've had an issue with. I would love to also, this is always a refining process. As you see from 2.3, that was not a final state, nor is 2.7. So yeah, Daniel, I don't know if we have a, anybody that has like questions, ideas, comments, frustrations. Hi, thanks for this. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate the 2.7 uh, graph update with the React flow, it's like so much more responsive. Uh, I really miss the UI color that we were able to uh, do we've got some tasks that have like 40, 50 different models that inter uh, depend on one another, and grouping those different UI node colors together would be really helpful. Yeah. Oh, um, ooh, that one's not that, that one's not happy. Okay. All right. Well, we'll wait to see if anything loads. But yeah, I think that makes sense. I just saw someone opened up an issue there that. Yeah, like we tried to clean up and add more context to each node in the graph, but you know, th that little green box that set and like the success next to it or the background on the empty, empty operator is still quite small. And so I think it is like, I would love to work on refining that. How do we still provide the like context of like a little bit more metadata on each task in the graph? But yeah, I think that's a great idea. Hi, do you think we could uh, maybe handle or offer as a plugin multi-tenancy just in the UI level so we could uh, separate uh, if you have about thousand or a few thousand eggs, could we some, uh, somehow uh, limit the number of DAGs a, a individual can see? Hmm, that, I mean, that's not just the UI part. That would be fun to like, I know there's been questions also just, yeah, if you have thousands of DAGs, how do you manage that? Either user permissions or we have tags, but they're like, I know there's been asked for more features, which is not. 
Uh, so I, I have a follow up on that one. Currently, you can you can currently tag DAGs. So the ability to filter by tag is probably an easy short term answer for that. But that um, multi tenancy is coming. But as a short term answer, that's probably an easy answer. Cool. Yeah. I mean, like I think that's updating a list too. Is we can have more advanced, add more advanced filters to like okay, can you do or combinations of tags and combination of tags, et cetera. Yeah, my question is more about the, now you, you said we have just the green color or the red color, but what if my Python operator or my operator is was just give me a warning? Is there a possibility to change the color just even not have just uh, red or green uh, and have, for example, a warning? Uh, orange color or change the color of, of my, based on my Python operator, for example. Yeah, um, I guess that's always a problem of like, how do we parse out what is just a UI concept versus like, what are deeper parts of Airflow? But yeah, I know we have many different statuses for task instances, but only two final states for DAG run, but I wanna see it ran, but maybe something wasn't quite right and the best we can do now is like, oh, you see it ran for really long, or once you're in the DAG view, you see that some of the tasks were skipped or had a, had a warning, but still ran, the DAG itself was successful. Yeah, that's an idea to explore. Yeah, for people who use branching, maybe it would be good to, to highlight the, the actual branch taken during execution and gray out skipped parts of the DAG. Mm. Mm. Like, yeah, because we only have, skipped is just a color Yeah, it's a color, but then, yeah, exactly. It's just status quo, but maybe, yeah, gray out the, the, that part of the DAG, uh, like edges and nodes to, to, make, to actually say visually, yeah, this part has never been touched or something like that. Yeah, like I think if you see, it's really tiny. Um, yeah, really tiny. In the tooltip here, we say like trigger rule all success. Maybe as part of that, we make, there's a way to visualize what are the trigger rules. So you can also expect what the branches are gonna be and maybe we try to update the line there to show you this is really where things went for this DAG run. That's cool. Well, uh, I actually have two. Um, one is, fairly quick, um, it's related to the audit logs. Uh, we've been trying to use that to know when people are turning off DAGs and like pausing and unpausing. And sometimes the audit log is like huge and doesn't have a, a filter, at least that, not as far as uh, 263. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to kind of just filter based on events, like who is, is pausing this DAG or who um, is like rerunning a DAG or something. That's like number one. Uh, and number two is like when you go to the DAG run page, um, sometimes it's not clear how many runs um, like needed to happen for, um, for a DAG to, to successfully uh, pass. Uh, sometimes it runs just once, but sometimes it's like four times or three times. So it'd be great just to, from the DAG run perspective, just see how many DAG runs happened. And if it's more than one, if like succeeded on the third retry, uh, just have like a number somewhere or, or a marker. Cool, yeah, both of those make sense. I think I was already playing with audit logs and it was like, yeah, our, the like REST API for that did not have enough like filtering to it. And then are we even capturing the audit logs correctly? I would love to have it like, you do a DAG note, that DAG note was updated by this person when they cleared this task. Uh, so it'd be really cool to improve that overall. And then, yeah, uh, I think there's another database part we can do for like a task instance. Right now when you clear it, we increase a task ID number, but then you can't see it in the Gantt chart. It'd be great to see, oh, this task ran three times, it failed th two times, and it finally is successful. I think that would be, yeah, really cool and like makes the Gantt chart a more useful part to debug what's going on. Um, so I think, um being able to limit the user actions through the UI is something that uh, we also have been longing for. 
but I do understand like there's a multi-tenancy element to it and there's a lot of like other backend stuff to it. Um, but that being said, like we would love to have something like, you know, like you can uh, just through like some sort of like drag, you can select a bunch of tasks or like DAG runs and you can just clear them as a collection so that you can backfill or prioritize the backfill of certain tasks, let's say after after an incident. So so like in that sense, you can potentially like for an hourly DAG, you can prioritize the first 10 hours rather than the, the earlier 72 hours of the uh, of the backfill. Cool, yeah, I think that makes sense. I think there's been like some discussion of when I have tons of runs and tons of tasks, it'd be great to like do some multi-select across the grid view and just like, cool, I wanna just clear. Um, <clears throat> in the graph view, it would be really cool if we could expose more information from the rendered template view in like a tooltip or something. For example, if you have like a um, an S3 key sensor, it would be really cool to see right here which file on S3 it's looking at without having to click through to the rendered template page. Yeah. Yeah, I think the two are a little bit far apart, like it might be a pretty big change. And then also the rendered template page has, in a lot of cases, a ton of stuff in it, but it might be nice for operators to allow like one field to surface right up to the UI um, for things like sensors looking at paths and things you would want to see at a glance. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this would be like a preview. Ooh. I was option there, you still Okay, yeah, that mic, the battery died on it. Uh, yeah, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Like we have to integrate rendered templates in order to move this out, move the entire DAGs page over. And maybe there's an advanced tool tip that gives you a preview of it. And then we bring you over to a more dedicated view to see all of the details. Cool. Um, or, uh, where's so, the mic? Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so this might be like more than just a UI thing, but like one of the things is like having hidden XCOM keys that you can't view through the UI. Cause like the, for like accessing, like for passing like security keys, for example, like it's a big thing where like you can't, like we don't want it to be viewable. Um, but like it makes it, it makes it so that we can't pass things through XCOM because um, people can just view it. Yeah, I think I was just talking to Yarek about this of also variables and connections is that we do some secret management, but like the Flask app builder template is just not flexible enough to make it, to make all of that work well. And so, yeah, I, I think that that's something we want to do is how do we manage, you know, making a better way to manage secrets or all the different ways you can manage a connection. Right now, that form, you have a whole lot of fields that aren't useful or it's hard to customize the forms for XCOMs, connections, variables, every, all that. Hi, yeah, um, I don't know if this is already a feature, but in the top level DAG view, it would be nice to have some, um, I know there's filtering like based on pause and unpause, but maybe sorting. Uh, so like the summary, like the where you see all the DAGs, it would be nice to see like if you could sort by last run date or sort by, um, you know, has this, oh, never mind. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Great work. Hi. Um, how does the Airflow UI manage or handle uh, changing DAG shapes across time? Does it always display just the most recent active DAG shape? Um, and if not, how like are there any plans to support that in the future UI-wise? How do you guys think about that? Yeah, uh, so that really goes, the real answer to that is DAG versioning. Yeah. Like we're not capturing, there's no like somewhere in the database that we're like, okay, this is this DAG. This is the DAG structure at this time, this is the DAG structure at that time. Unfortunately, how the UI will be, if I load a graph, that is going to be the latest time that DAG was parsed. Although you might have DAG runs that are older than that. And in the grid view, that should show up as just empty tasks in that DAG. Um, if those tasks still exist, the problem is we're not keeping, we might not always be doing a great job of keeping like old tasks that were like, the names were changed or they were deleted. Uh, so yeah, there's a few pieces we can improve on. 
as like a preliminary version, but I, you know, it really requires DAG versioning. So like, oh, each time I click on a different bar on that grid view, it will render the structure of that DAG run itself. And yeah, have some ideas of like, you know, you see a break in that timeline to let you know, hey, this DAG structure changed between this DAG run and that DAG run. That would be, yeah, that would be a lot of fun whenever we're at that point. Yeah, uh, so then maybe a low-hanging fruit is you said you want to remodel the homepage anyway. Uh, kind of you presented the homepage and it's always struggling for me if I want to present something that you need to have a very wide screen to see all the columns. And especially if I want to trigger something really on the right side. So if, if it would be very good to remodel the homepage to squeeze out or being able to squeeze out a bit of columns so that even if the screen is not as wide as this, that I still can present the whole stuff and don't need to scroll right and left uh, so from UX perspective um, but one other thing that I talked with uh, Pierre already in the break is um, we talked about the render template page already it would be quite cool if I have a custom operator if I can maybe like a plug and in influence how the page is being displayed uh, because in render template for example we can have dicts or whatever arbitrary values. They are very technical usually uh, driving the workflow, but having a business view on this to say, I want to present that feature like not having technical values being presented and attributes, but maybe being able to render a, a customer overview so that somebody as not being technical expert, but rather a process expert um, has a better rendition, um, like could be the same like a tooltip customization as well as a panel customization that I maybe can have some utility code generating whatever HTML to then have a nicer overview. Yeah, cool. That, that makes sense to me. I know we did like all, I know um, there was the like, all the DAG trigger, like DAG run trigger stuff that's like the new templates. So I think the render templates, yeah, that, that'd be a really cool part to work on. Are we at time? Uh, yes, we are. Cool. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming uh, to last this talk. Quick, uh, oh, don't mind if I do yeah. quick. You know, this is a whole lot of this is also just community contributions. And so to keep this conversation going, please open up an issue on GitHub. Um, look for a good first issue tag if you want to contribute or also reach out to me on Slack. I know, I know many people are data engineers steeped in Python, not knowing what JavaScript and React really are, or enough to be dangerous and to just break everything. And so, yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you want to do something. And then just final special thanks to a number of the, a number of contributors who have decided to switch over from data world and help on the UI. It's uh, been really helpful and really cool that it is a community effort and not just uh, one person forcing a user experience on all of you. Awesome.